We're here at AIM Expo. It's held every year in Orlando, Florida, and over 600 exhibitors are here, exhibiting anything, everything to do with motorcycles. And this works out well, because we're Clutch and Chrome, an online motorcycle magazine. And this is Mile by Mile, our web series where we take you, our readers, with us as we report on this wonderful motorcycle world of ours. And I'll be your host, Rich, the editor of Clutch and Chrome. On this edition of Mile by Mile, Clutch and Chrome is in the Orange County Convention Center in Orlando, Florida for the third annual American International Motorcycle Expo. To bring everyone up to speed, let's find out what the AIM Expo exactly is. So AIM Expo, the idea was conceived I think back in 2010, 2011, Larry Little, Mike Webster, started putting together the idea of the greatest show like they have in Europe, like Intermont, ICO, which is a mega show that has OEMs, aftermarket, it's open to, to trade, it's open to media, and it's open to consumers, you know, which we didn't have over here in the United States. Um, so back in 2013, they brought the first show. Um, it was a success, they really brought, what this brings is the whole industry together. That's the idea. Right. You know, not, not just dealers, and not just consumers, and not just half of Everybody here one place, one time, uh, the right time. You things. essentially have everything and anything to do with a motorcycle here. Yeah, and, and power sports. I mean, we have a lot of side-by-side -side ATDs here. Even Yamaha Watercraft has a display here. And then every single motorcycle you can think of, uh, times two. As Kurt said, nearly every motorcycle manufacturer attended AIM Expo. We didn't see Harley-Davidson or Ducati, and couldn't quite work out if Indian motorcycles were there or not. But did we mention power sports? And what about these babies? To learn more about the custom motorcycles featured throughout the exhibition, we turn to AIM Expo's Bob K. So, Bob, yes. you had a special, special job for this AIM Expo. AIM Expo, as Kurt was saying, was the power sports show of the industry but it didn't have enough of a V-twin custom element to it. Um, what we're having here this weekend is called the Championship of the Americas. So builders come from uh, Greenland to the tip of South America, Central America, all over the states. And uh, the winner of the freestyle class of this event goes on to Germany mm -hmm. to compete in Cologne next year in the World Championship, the AMD World Championship of Custom Bike Building. That is so cool. That is so cool. So because you've been around and you also know that, you know, bikers are an avid bunch, are there any names in the people who have entered these motorcycles that people may know or heard of? Oh, absolutely. We have some of the top builders in the country competing. Um, behind us is Jeremy Cup. He's won all kinds of awards with this bike we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, Pat Patterson, uh, been known for his work with Sportsters. Uh, Bill Dodge does wonderful pan heads, older motorcycles. Uh, Tony Cruz from Analog Cycles. Uh, let me see who else is here. Um, Carl Pusser, he's won some United States Championship last year. Um, Gilby's been here. Uh, we literally have a plethora of top, the top builders in the country competing. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Now, we put you on the spot and we let you choose the place that we're shooting this in front of one of your favorite motorcycles. Do you want to tell us about this motorcycle? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jeremy has already uh, won a spot um, to compete in the World Championship, and he's going again. Um, he's a young builder out of Virginia that just does incredible work. Um, I picked this bike to show you because it, it really illustrates the quality and workmanship, craftsmanship of these young builders. Um, what we have here is a totally handmade frame. He's done the aluminum tank, the front spoiler, the fenders, all hand formed. But what's very unique about this is the drivetrain. This bottom end is actually a Buell bottom end. Okay. With a Ducati overhead cam top end, a pre-unit Triumph transmission with a hydraulic clutch. Wow. You don't buy parts that. Everything <laughs> is handmade. Now we know how the show came about and its passion for custom motorcycles. What else was there for Clutch and Chrome at AIM Expo? The first morning of the first day started with Kawasaki revealing its new XZ-10R and their new Vulcan S Cafe, as well as something from the Power Sports line, of course. Honda showed off its new CBR500R. Yamaha used the occasion to not only discuss its Power Sport models, but to show off its off-road concept motorcycle DT07. 
and Wrangler made his first ever appearance at AIM Expo with long distance rider Jeff Cohn to remind us if their jeans were good enough for the Cowboys, well, they're good enough for bikers. After all the reveals and unveilings at the AIM Expo media room, it was time for Clutch and Crumb to head out to the show's floor. Well, we didn't have to go far before we found this extraordinary looking motorcycle. So we had to stop at this booth. This is the National Moto and Cycle Company because when you first look at this, you go, I think I've seen something like this in the Harley Davidson Museum. But this in fact is not an antique. Is that correct, Matty? It is not an antique. So tell us about it. Well, we're in love with where bicycles became their big brother than motorcycles. Uh-huh. You know, where men were going to World War I, getting exposed to motorcycles on the enemy lines and in you know wartime. And then they became motorcycles. They became the first lovers motorcycles and two wheels that came home to the states and that's where the motorcycle industry really flourished right so you built this yes we built this in indianapolis uh-huh uh with indianapolis fabrications and myself uh we built it from the ground up wow uh, you know other than a couple components that are from bicycles it's a steady steed so when someone wants this, do they find you online? Yeah, nationalmoto.com uh -huh. or Facebook forward slash nationalmoto. And you're going to build this to order? Build this to order. Okay. We do custom, but we're also in the uh, depths of uh, developing our dealer network. Awesome. Uh, we're going to have about 20 to 25 dealers across the United States, cool. motorcycle dealers. Right, and, and I'm not an attorney. I don't even play one on yeah, TV. Yeah. But because of the size of this engine, you don't actually need a motorcycle license to correct. drive it, right? Yeah, I mean, you do have 50 different states and 50 different laws. And right. Laws. But as long as it has moving, moving pedals at the 49cc mark, right. there's a lot of gray matter. You right. still need to be a responsible and safe rider. Absolutely. As with all the people we speak to in this edition of Mile by Mile, Clutch and Chrome will include their details not only at the end of this webisode, but in the video description found below. I will say this, if Maddie and Deborah put as much effort into their motorcycles as they did their booth at AIM Expo, that is going to be one fun ride. So we've come over to the stand for Ace Cafe Orlando. I'm with Steve Blum, who's yep. the Chief Marketing Officer yes. for the company. Right. So why don't you tell the Clutch and Chrome viewers exactly what the, uh, the whole Ace Cafe is about? Well, I can tell you the Ace uh, has a long history in bikes, cars, and rock and roll. It's been around since 1938, uh, in its 77th year now. And this is the first Ace Cafe in the USA, so we're really excited to be not only here at AIM for our third year as a part of AIM itself, which is also in its third year, but also to be bringing the Ace to downtown Orlando. Awesome. Now, how big is your uh, location in Orlando? In Orlando, we'll be on uh, three acres. Uh, we've got a big giant car park, also known as a parking lot, uh, <laughs> that allows us to do bike meets, car shows, live events, uh, rock concerts, the whole thing. And where is it going to be located? It'll be located in downtown Orlando at 100 West Livingston Street on the corner of Livingston and Garland. So if okay. you're familiar with it, uh, it faces I-4 and on our backside is the railroad tracks. So it's all about kind of the motor-centric transportation hub area, which we're going to call Ace Corner. I like that. Now the people you want to come, well you want everyone to come, but in particular the people that ride these, right? Yeah, you know, the Ace has been built on that, kind of the, the, the spirit, the history, and the culture of, uh, of bikes, uh, of cars, of course, of uh, rock and roll itself, but uh, you know, the, the, these, these vintage bikes, these, these guys that have these cafe racers, uh, all about the speed, thrills, culture. For those who may have wondered about the term cafe racer, Here's a quick history lesson. In the 1960s, British youth fell in love with the motorcycle. Buying cheap and getting and keeping their rides on the road became a way of life. To prove who had the best motorcycle, informal and highly illegal races were held from cafe to cafe. Not only did this lead to the name for the style of motorcycle, but created the very look of lightweight, lightly powered, pieced together motorcycles we know today as the Cafe Racer. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, these guys are uh, a group of, of local guys who 
ride. They're called Cafe Moto, and they've all got vintage bikes, all have cafe racers, all about that culture, that speed thrills culture, and they love to be a part of what we're doing. They bring them out for us. But it doesn't just end there. I mean, we are a, uh, a place that takes all comers. Mm -hmm. Certainly if you're a petrol head, which is what we call, you know, the guys that, uh, and girls that are kind of into motors, uh, then this is your place. But certainly uh, it doesn't end there. You know, if you're coming in for a bite to eat, a cup of tea, coffee, see a show, it's also good for you. So it's a lifestyle that you're really um, enjoy um, celebrating. It, it really is. And, you know, we're fortunate enough in that, you know, the brand has been around so long that it, it's become, you know, a lifestyle brand. It is a heritage brand. You know, there's very few of those that you get to kind of rally around, um, specifically in this kind of genre. I mean, we're, we're a, a motor diner that made it very, very big. Right. And luckily, fortunately, uh, we're able to bring this to the U.S. now. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Well, Steve, hey, thank man. you very much. Thanks I do for appreciate having me. Your time. Thanks for being here. We're looking forward to coming and visiting you. Yeah, please do. Let's say, you know, we're saying early 2016. Let's call it as early as we can. I, I can't quote <laughs> the date yet, but, but look, that backdrop will be way better than this one. So by the time we get that all ramped up, you'll be able to see a whole full three acres of really cool stuff. There is no shortage of things to see and talk about at the third annual AIM Expo. But one item caught Clutch and Chrome's attention long before we even arrived in Orlando. The company is WeGo, and I had the pleasure of speaking with its owner, Jerry Toscani. Well, WeGo is a company we started about a year and a half ago because we wanted to get into what we thought would be the next great boom in consumer electronics, and that is portable power. Whether it's your phone, your bike, your car, eventually you're going to run out of power and you're going to need to recharge. So we have two lines of products. One is our WeGo battery packs, and these are these wonderful little products that will charge your cell phone, tablet, and laptop when you need it to. But one of the reasons we're here at AIM is because we have a line of jump starters called WeGo jump starters, and these things will charge your tablets and your phones, but really what makes it a lot of fun and revolutionary is the fact that by attaching the supply clamps, will also jumpstart your engine. And this little guy right here, what we call the Wego JS6, will start up to a 4.6 liter engine. This thing right here, and I actually have small hands, so this looks a little bigger than it really is. Right. Well, you have your cell phone on you, yeah. right? This is, so, so the there you go, this is a Samsung. You can tell he owns the company because he's got the latest <laughs> Samsung. So this is the Samsung, and look, it's the same size. So you're telling me, Jerry, yes. that if I and I've done it, so I have written enough miles. I've done it to where I've gone onto my motorcycle after having a particularly good lunch somewhere, having a nice night at the biker night, and I hear that click, 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 click. Right? We've Sound all been there. Music. Right for you. Yeah. <laughs> and you're telling me that I can use this to start my motorcycle. Yes, you can. See, that's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. And and let me show you because Jerry's doing the kind thing and holding the microphone for me. But can you see this, Larry? This is as simple as it is. This is all you need in your pack, mm -hmm. right here. And you basically pug this puppy in here, put these on your uh, battery. Uh, if you don't know where your battery is on your motorcycle, then call for help. We, we have issues at this point, but, um, and then you just start it up. And I was, I was um, when we were talking about this earlier, this can be reused again and again. Yeah, you'll get up to a thousand charge cycles with it. Right. Which is years of use. The other great thing about it is, when you buy a Wego, you're going to get a complete kit. So that means AC chargers, AC adapters, DC adapters. It takes about an hour and a half to charge. The wonderful thing about it, besides everything else you mentioned, is it's lithium ion technology. It only loses 2% charge per month. And that blew me away because that was one of the, the things I was asking when we were doing the preliminary interview, um, because I'm not really this smart. <laughs> I learned the answers ahead of time is I can charge this and put it in my go bag for my motorcycle, and it's good for a year. Yeah, you come back a year later, it's a fun you still have 75% charge. WeGo offers a staggering 18 months warranty on this product. We asked Jerry for his final thoughts for the Clutch and Chrome viewers. I would say you've probably done a lot worse with $100. And <laughs> you're gonna get your money back the first time you use it, but it's really convenient. 
you know, think of it as peace of mind that you buy in case you ever have a dead battery that you need to jump start. But also, you're going to use it every day to charge your devices. So right. it's a really handy, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a new biking essential. And Clutch and Chrome agrees with Jerry, noting in our online review of the product, it was a must-have motorcycle accessory. You hear that? Right next door are the dealers learning how to become better dealers. This show is not just for people like you and I to be able to come and see what motorcycles and all the accessories that go with them. This is also to help dealers learn how to offer better customer service, how to sell their models better. This is basically an all-round expo. Lately, Clutch & Crumb's website has published more and more articles on electric motorcycles. It's a fascinating segment of our world. When we heard Zero Motorcycles were unveiling new models at AIM Expo, there are no guesses where we were when Zero Motorcycles took to the stage. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thanks for coming to the Zero Motorcycles 2016 new model presentation. Scott Harden, Zero Motorcycles Vice President of Global Marketing, took to the stage not only to discuss the new technology found in their electric bikes, but introduce the new models. So I'd like to introduce everyone to the new Zero DSR. The Zero DSR is a derivative of the DS model. Ever since we introduced the SR version of the S, the consumers have been asking, when are we going to make all this torque, all this power, all of this adventure available in our leading adventure bike. And here it is, the DSR Zero for 2016. And if that first one wasn't enough for you, here's the second. So I'd like to introduce everybody to the Zero FXS Supermoto. Ever since we introduced the FX, this bike has been begging to be made. The FX is our inner city hooligan bike, the perfect do everything bike type of bike you can break to work if you get stuck in traffic, pop up on a curb, blast across the open parking lot, ride up a flight of stairs, run it off a loading dock, whatever you want to do. And it's only made sense to take that and make it into a full super moto bike. We caught up with Scott at the Zero Motorcycles display not only to ask about new models, but an interesting story he told about battery prices at the media presentation he gave earlier. Uh, Mid-year 2015, we saw the cost curve of batteries coming down at a quicker rate than we had forecast. And we were at a position where we could actually pass it along to the consumer. So rather than waiting until the next model year of doing it, we did it immediately. We dropped the price about $1,500 at retail across the board for the 15s uh, in uh, May. and. Uh, not only did we did that pass that savings along the consumer, but we also took into consideration all of our customers who had just bought bikes at the formerly higher price, and we went back to them and made them a special offer. We gave them a nice value add with a free accessory charger and a real nice custom jacket to kind of make up for the difference for, the, for, for being the first in the market. We certainly didn't want to penalize them for buying early, so we gave them some nice goodies to make up for it and have them. People really thought that was great. It wasn't long before neither Scott or myself could resist talking about the beautiful Zero motorcycle sitting there behind us. So this is the Zero FXS Supermoto. Uh, it features all the new stuff that we talked about, the new technology and the batteries that we've developed, 6.5 kilowatts of power, three point, uh, roughly 3.3 .3 in each battery here of nominal power, a peak power, I should say, in each uh, battery module, our IPM motor, uh, interior permanent magnet motor that's much more efficient from a cooling perspective that allows you to hammer the heck out of the thing without any degradation of the magnets or us having to implement any thermal cutback strategies to keep that all in check. Works really, really well. We've got uh, new charge systems coming on the, on the S platform that rapidly increases the uh, charge rate on the bikes. So you are Vice President of Global Marketing so in your mind, and I know you don't want to have one type of customer, but you have a general idea of who walks in your store and buys a Zero motorcycle. Who is that person? Well, we basically have them from three different groups. We have the full stable guy, 
that loves motorcycles and has one of everything and he just wants to have the coolest new thing on the market out there and he buys an electric bike. Then we have the returning rider. We have a lot of guys that have been away from the sport for a while, rode early on, got involved in career, school, family, whatever. They're coming back to the sport and they want to see what's new out there and try it. And lo and behold, there's an electric motorcycle now and that's it. And they ride one and it's a hell of a lot of fun. And then they step up to the plate. So we've got that. And then the third group, it's the new rider, the young guy, the millennial, the guy that wants to get involved in motorcycling. It's grown up in a world where everything has been done through their you know, through their phone and through digital resources and here's this thing that kind of fits in that vein and it's the perfect bike for them and that's the third group of guys that we have on the bike. It was at this point our very own Larry shouted an excellent question from behind the camera. Do riders ever miss the sound of an engine? You know we hear that a lot. Some people ride because they like the visceral sound of the motorcycle. And certainly this bike does make a sound, and there's a kind of an elegant sound to it when you ride. There's kind of a growl to it of the electric motor, which is kind of nice. I personally don't miss it. I like the way that I feel when I ride it because it does something magical for me. It allows me to feel connected to the machine because I hear everything that's going on around me, and I can really concentrate on what the machine is doing, the way that's delivering the power, what's going, what's going on in the environment. I feel more connected to the environment around me. I can hear other vehicles and what they're doing. I can hear Mother Nature. I can feel more connected to my fellow rider because, heck, I can talk to them while we're riding together going down the road because that's what you could do with this. And then finally, I feel more connected to myself. That's the beauty of an electric bike. I really feel more connected to myself because I don't have that wall of noise around me. And that's something that I truly appreciate. It's fair to say both the new motorcycles as well as the time spent chatting with Zero Motorcycles certainly lived up to our high expectations. And by the way, Clutch and Chrome carries regular news and in-depth articles not only about Zero Motorcycles, but all the featured interviews in this webisode of Mile by Mile. There were far more than motorcycles and power sports at the third annual AIM Expo. Case in point, Bell Helmets used the event to unveil their new line of star helmets. The unveiling was held on the showroom floor with media and dealers mingling to see what Bell had in store. Thank you guys for coming. I'm Chris Sackett, uh, Vice President and General Manager for Bell, Bell Helmets. Excited to be here. Thank you guys for showing up to see the unveiling of the Star, the new uh, Bell Star. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's look at the good. We also have all the models and all the graphics being unveiled along the side. So grab a beer, walk around, take a look, and let us know what you think. Thank you everybody for coming. Clutch and Chrome swung by the Bell Helmet booth on day two to learn more about this new line of helmets. A quick backstory, obviously, you know, Bell has been around for, for many, many years, um, since the 50s, but we are one of the biggest, if not the biggest, head protection company in the world. We have, um, you know, obviously the Bell brand with cycling and, and power sports, um, but also uh, we own, uh, part of our company is Riddell, which is uh, very, very big in uh, stick and ball sports, obviously in football. Um, so we share a lot of technology, so there's a lot of things that we bring to the table that, um, you know, the other uh, manufacturers don't uh, have the resources for. Okay, absolutely. So before we started this, Rob warned me that there was only so much he could tell us about this. That's right. He was like, if I do this sign, stop asking questions. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he didn't give me a sign. But he does have a slight glare in his eyes when you get close. So, yeah. so tell us what you can tell us about your latest and greatest. So the, the new um, helmet that we unveiled yesterday was our Star Series. And um, this here in front of me is the, is the Pro Star, which is the, uh, the Halo uh, product in that category um, of the Star platform. Um, the biggest thing that sets it apart from everything else is the actual shell construction. The texture and carbon that we use is, is, hasn't been used in a motorcycle helmet before and it's very expensive. So that's why it, it brings a $1,300 price point. Over here, stepping down one model, we have the Pro Star. I'm, so, I'm sorry, the Race Star. And the Race Star is literally the exact same helmet as the Pro Star um, with a different shell construction. So you see the 3K carbon weave here. So th this is a, a little bit of a lower price point at, uh, at, at $800. 
and um, literally same helmet, so same, all the same features um, at a lower price point. And then over here, Star, with uh, a non-magnetic cheek pad system and a, um, just our standard liner material, and then also a, uh, a tri-matrix weave shell. So this helmet is priced at $500, so it's definitely three different price points for three different consumers. Right. Um, uh, but, but literally the same helmet, so the same, same design, all of the technologies are shared throughout it um, with different shell constructions and materials. Now one of the things that you promoted during your presentation yesterday was the field of view yes. is vastly increased with this Correct. helmet. Can you walk us yes. through that? Yeah, so really quick, the, the, uh, the, the Pro Star and the Racer helmets actually come with what we're calling, um, uh, it's, it's view in this platform, it's called PanoVision, uh -huh. and the PanoVision, what it is, is basically it's, it's a increased field of view, so laterally and vertically, and for the Pro Star and the Race Star, because that consumer is going to be more of a, a racer-based consumer, we, we're doing what's called a race view. So we orient the eye port into a race orientation, so when you're in that, that tuck position, um, you're not being obstructed by the brow, it's being lifted up above, so when you're in that tuck position, your, your field of view is increased vertically. Also, in, in our, our uh, two, top two helmets, you'll see a flex liner system as well. So what this is, this actual technology was released last year when we released our new motocross helmet, the Moto9 Flex. So we actually took the flex liner system and put it in our new street helmet as well. So right. what this is, is uh, three different densities of foam. Mm -hmm in the liner that is a segment liner system you can see the different segments so what that does is it allows the helmet to have an adaptive fit so it'll, when you put the helmet on it'll adapt to the head shape and then also each different layer of um, energy management material is specific to a, an impact right so you would have the eps which is the traditional helmet material um, which is for the high-end impacts right you have the epp the black level here which is for the uh, the middle level impacts, right? And then you have the red EPS material, which is, um, I'm sorry, e EPO material, which is for the low level impact, right? So all of them work together in, as a package to to manage a wider variety specific to a type of impact. Many of the more revolutionary features of the Star line of helmets are in lockdown until the helmets are released in 2016. Clutch and Chrome will, of course, report on these details as and when they're released. Rob is extremely generous with his time, and viewers who'd like to see more should look for the full interview with Bell Helmets, which will be featured in the bonus section of Clutch and Chrome's YouTube channel. As I mentioned earlier, this just isn't a motorcycle show, it is in fact a power sports show. What that means is, you're walking down the aisles, everything and anything is here, and then something like this catches your eye. Setting up shop right across from BRP were Gibbs Sports Amphibians, who are quite rightly calling themselves the pioneering global leader in high-speed amphibian technology. What this means to you and I are these are very cool power sport vehicles that can drive onto the water, lift up its wheels, and soar across the waves. The idea for this type of flexible transforming vehicle came to the company's founder, Alan Gibbs, back on his ranch in his native New Zealand. Seriously, annoyed that his boats were far from the shore or too far from the water, he started experimenting with adding wheels to his boats. Well, you know what? We'll let him tell the rest of the story. But I thought, you know, this is interesting. What if I could make one that was much lighter and could be actually used on the road as well? Right. So I um, got stuck in with some New Zealand, found a talented New Zealand fellow who lived quite near to me who had been trying to do the same thing. We combined forces and uh, he worked for me and I then went to America in 97, uh, bought a house in Detroit and hired 20 engineers and that's when we developed the first vehicle which is the Aquat, the car. Right. And that car broke the world record which from, for an amphibian was 8.7 miles an hour uh, with a speed of 33 miles an hour. And, and that had a very famous driver at one point, did it not? Yes, it had. Richard Branson 
to the record crossing of the English Channel. Right. We reduced the time to get across, I think it was by about five hours. Wow, <laughs> nice. So, so how fast can they uh, get to the ocean? And once they're on the ocean, how fast can they uh, drive? Well, this vehicle is, is governed down to 45 miles an hour land. Okay. But it's got a 130 horsepower engine in it, so if you took the governor off, you could, it could go 100 miles. Not that you're encouraging that. No, and on water it goes 45 miles an hour too. Okay, awesome, awesome. These are beautiful vehicles. You have, essentially, you have a motorcycle that you can take to the water, you have a trike, and then you have the quads over here. Yeah, and then the, the, this is a, a new one of ours, a side to side. Yeah. And, and that, that's a brilliant vehicle. I mean, you know, guys who want to get out and have fun in the desert and stuff, I mean, it's twice as much fun if you can also whiz around the water and go hunting and you're not stopped by, you know, by a river or something. And, Right. Go anywhere. It's Absolutely. The ultimate adventure bit. You're selling adventure. Yeah. Clutch and Chrome walked away from the Gibbs Sports Amphibian booth intrigued at what the company had created with its line of unique vehicles. And of course, a silly grin on our faces. There were a lot of things to see at the third annual AIM Expo, too much in fact to include in the time we have for this episode of Mile by Mile. But as you probably noticed, Clutch and Chrome not only took a look at what would make headlines in any motorcycle magazine, we also spent time on the stuff that makes our two-wheeled world so very interesting. And this would include our chat with Unigo. So yeah, we were talking about all the things that catch your eye, and this little puppy, uh, apart from the fact you're conveniently located right next to the media hub, certainly caught ours when we walked past. And this is some, it's a take on something that, I'm going to be honest, is very controversial in motorcycle circles, and that is a motorcycle trailer. Exactly. But I have to tell you, you carry it off with this thing. We do. And we agree that there is a lot of controversy for motorcycle trailers in the industry because a lot of them are too big, they carry too much, we can't put heavy duty brakes on our bikes, we can pull them but stopping in an emergency. So we keep our trailers small, lighter, to make it a safer way of, of using it. Right, and this guy would know because he is the president of the company, Michael Feldbeier. We were surprised to learn that although the Unigo is built with the latest materials and features and modern design, at its heart is well-tested motorcycle know-how. Single wheel trailers have been around since the 30s. Right. If you look back and go online and see what's been done. But for the motorcycle market in current history, it got forgotten. It got forgotten because the two-wheel trailers became more popular. People started carrying larger quantities of things. And that's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to keep it small. We wanted to keep it safe. We are extremely targeted towards safety. And this actually leans with the rider as it, it goes around corners. It becomes part of the bike. Right. It's an extension of the bike. Uh, if wh Whatever you were doing before, it does not change how you ride. That's how we get our ride like you do, part of our, our logo. Uh, so it keeps you doing what you're doing. If you're an aggressive rider, it's still going to be aggressive. If you're not an aggressive rider, which I'm not, it doesn't change anything. It makes you a little longer. That's it. Right, right. Now, how much can it hold? Okay, empty weight 70 pounds. It can mm -hmm. hold 110 pounds or 5 cubic feet. Mm -hmm. Normally, the 5 cubic feet comes before the 110 pounds. And the beauty about this, um, which was uh, mentioned uh, when we initially spoke about your product, was it lowers the center of gravity. Right. You know, the, pretty much uh, anything a motorcyclist puts on the back of his bike is on the seat with him, right. and, the, and the weight goes up from there. Exactly. Whilst this, uh, well, what's the height of this? What's the bottom height of this from um, the road? You know, I don't know the exact. I'm, but it, approximately, I'm sorry, it, it looks. But it does it, keep it. It keeps it below. It keeps it out. It's it looking it like eight inches, right? Yeah. So you're you're not into that problem. Right. We take the heavy stuff that we loaded on our bike and move it down to the trailer. You put your lightweight stuff that you need to get out quickly, like your rain gear and stuff. You can still keep up on top. Right. But it keeps it again another safety feature of this type of design. Right. And then one final thing that I did want to point out about this motorcycle that we did talk about before is you're pretty flexible on the colors. Yes. Explain Our that. Our standard color, black and white, which is a gel coat. It's a very thick and durable, so it's a very rugged. Or, as you can probably see from the 
the post behind. We can paint match any color out there. The, our painter, who is not part of our company, he's separate. We, we, we search high and low to find him. Whatever they want done, we can match it. Having seen the Unigo motorcycle trailer in person, Clutch and Chrome had a new appreciation for including this sometimes controversial motorcycle accessory on a future road trip. As we mentioned earlier, the third annual AIM Expo was large and busy, featuring far more than we can include in our 40 minutes on Mile by Mile. Other interesting things we saw, BRP brought their spider, which was appropriate as it rides between the worlds of motorcycles and power sports. And where there are bikers, demo rides are sure to be found. With AIM Expo, however, a rider could really expand their experiences. As you've seen with our footage, there were plenty of helmet manufacturers. Bringing together Clutch and Chrome's experiences took slightly longer than we expected. Long enough, in fact, for organizers to release the official numbers for the motorcycle event. 18,788 motorcycle and power sport enthusiasts attended the event. They saw a whopping 566 exhibitors, and those exhibitors manned the booths with 3,388 people. Kid you not. Just as well, the third annual AIM Expo had 888,000 square feet for the event. <laughs> they obviously needed it. Clutch and Chrome reported on the event using Twitter, Instagram, as well as the broadcasting app Periscope. If you missed us, make sure that doesn't happen again. Follow Clutch and Chrome so you can join in our next motorcycle adventure. Clutch and Chrome would like to thank the staff of AIM Expo for their incredible help and cooperation throughout the event. Remember, we've included information on everyone interviewed, not only in this video, but also in the video's description below. Finally, thanks to you for joining us on this webisode. We look forward to your company on the next motorcycle adventure and the next installment of Mile by Mile.